Latest statistical figures released by Nui's Statistics Division last week made for interesting reading with vital statistics, consumer price index and travelling residents and visitors up to June. The first set of figures, vital statistics, are essential for input for planning of human development. Data collected from January to June this year has estimated a resident population of 1,461, with 91 who are resident overseas. Total births recorded 16 new babies, 11 males and 5 females. Total deaths were 2 with 1 female and 1 male, bringing the natural increase of population to 8. There were also a total of 3 marriages. Figures collected for the consumer price index for the quarter ending June measures changes in the living cost faced by workers. Based on the figures, the CPI was 148.2, which is 0.2 points higher than the previous quarter ending in March. This is an indication that the price of goods and services purchased by consumers has increased with an annual average inflation of 0.63%. Another set of statistics based on the travelling residents and visitors to Niue for June quarter recorded total arrivals at 1,433 and departures 1,338 with a net migration of 95. Breakdown on arrival figures had 1,064 with 391 of those visitors identifying themselves as Niwayans, whereas non-Niwayan visitors totaled 673. In addition to the arrival, there were 368 returning residents. Total departing residents totaled 370, with three residents indicating they were leaving permanently, and total departing visitors were 960. Waste oil is being collected around the island in an effort facilitated by the IWRM project, Environment Department, Health Department and Bulk Fill to reduce the risk of water pollutant on the island. Water Division of Public Works Department said this is the first time an attempt has been made to rid the island of waste oil. The expensive exercise has been long overdue because of funding but according to the Water Division, IWRM has fronted up to fund the removal of waste oil off the island. $7,000 will cost one of 20-ton tank tainers to be removed off the island. According to Mr. Andre Siohani, the most urgent focus is on removing the waste oil, but other developments will look at a drafting a policy for users of oil in the future, among other aspects of usage. This, he said, will assist in accelerating the process of identification and removal. Mechanical waste, oil, government department waste are some of the areas that will be assisted by the facilitators in the island's first ever removal, expected to start in October, with two more scheduled for the next year. Another program that has been slow for a while is the asbestos campaign, which is expected to start tomorrow. This week, the Crown Law Office is hosting a series of workshops with Professor Tony Angelo on government procedures for Cabinet, members of the New Legislative Assembly, New Public Service Commission and senior civil servants. Professor Tony Angelo, who has been a legal advisor to the government of Niue, is also constitution advisor. He drafted many of Niue's law. The workshops are held are to develop and discuss key governance issues in the context of the key relationship contained in the constitution. The previous workshop on similar issues was held in 2008, after the formation of the new government. Crown Law Office said the aim of the new National Strategic Plan 2009-2013 National Development Pillar for Good Governance is to ensure that good governance reflects the principles of transparency and accountability and is practiced at all levels. The aim is to establish and practice good governance principles 
that will create an environment where all residents are fully informed and consulted. This morning, senior civil servants were taken through a familiarization process of their roles, responsibilities and relationships with government and other stakeholders, making sure they have a sound understanding of the basis of the authority and the relationship of the constitutional officers to each other. 24 international fishermen from overseas will take to Niue waters over the weekend for a four-day fishing competition. According to Niue Tourism Development Manager Hayden Porter, it's the first time an international fishing competition like this will take place in Niue, and the expectation is that 11 local fishing boats will be booked for the event. However, only the arriving visitors are allowed to compete in boats, paying top dollar to travel to the island for some much talked about great fishing. And arriving with the competitors is Jeff Thomas, who hosts the New Zealand television program Outdoors with Jeff. A different competition for local fishermen has also been scheduled for the Waka section only. Mr. Porter said the local fishermen are allowed to participate with a cost of $10 each for the competition with daily prices to be won. The fishing competition is also expected to land some great catch with a definite competition in store for the local wakas. If you would like to enter the fishing competition, please contact Niue Tourism Office. Safety and upskilling staff was the focus of a one-day training session held for public works staff last Friday. Enhancing the capabilities of all staff in raising safety awareness, especially in terms of occupational health and safety, is an important aspect for all public servants, but especially for those who work in confined spaces and high-risk jobs. The training was initiated and facilitated by the Water Supply Division and is only the beginning of what will hopefully be an ongoing initiative by the, gov by the department. Director Dave Talangi says the training facilitated by staff from the Water Supply Division is to raise awareness of staff to be conscious of the risks while on the job. Safety in the workplace, especially for those who work in high-risk jobs, is important. And there have been several near misses not only with Public Works Department but other departments as well. This is also an issue that has been brought up in Parliament several times about budget cuts to certain allowances that should be reinstated due to the nature of certain jobs and means of compensation for workers. According to one participant, there needs to be some serious consideration in developing policies to ensure workers' rights are recognised in policy. This is a matter to be taken up with the New Public Service Commission. And to end our news bulletin, La Kepa Malay Law rolled out all the stops on Saturday to put on another marvellous show day. The crowds were slow to arrive, but the stalls with mouth-watering delicacies were plentiful. An apparent lack of variety of agricultural produce could have been put down to the limited number of people in the village, but the quality of what was on display made up for it. The day was opened with the usual sicker throwing competition and there were activities to entertain the whole family with mini golf to platon and raffles of all sorts. But it was the entertainment that stopped the crowds in their tracks to take a break in which the youngsters of Malay Law take onto the stage to show off their moves. Something out of the ordinary for this year saw the introduction of the traditional whistle making competition which proved very entertaining and meant that throughout the remainder of the performances one could hear the endless sounds of the whistles. There was also a surprise performance from a young Michael Jackson fan and the day concluded just before midday. That's our news bulletin for tonight. Good evening. <laughs>